filming. Hey, it's Tuesday and it's Never Seen LA. As always, we cover the great Jonas Never's work, various parts of the city. We stay in Venice. We're on Lincoln Boulevard, a few blocks south of uh, Rose Avenue, where Casablanca Restaurant is. We're at the uh, Planet Fabric, if you want to look this up on Lincoln Boulevard and come check it out. Yeah, that's him. That's the one and only Marlon Brando from the 1953 The Wild One. Uh, that was a, it's a really um, influential and iconic movie. It's inspired an awful lot of other movies, which I'll explain. So again, that's Marlon Brando. This is a, a 53 movie that Laszlo Benedek, a Hungarian, uh, actually directed this. Stanley Kramer was the producer, and that is uh, Johnny Stabler, who um, he led his gang. And, and they were a motorcycle group. What this movie was, it really set off what was already existing. You see, in the backside of World War II, a lot of veterans kind of wanted to explore and see parts of the country, and motorcycles became a form of self-expression. And so then motorcycle clubs really started to, you know, populate more and more, and guys started to dress a little bit more with leather jackets and the like. It was on the backside of the jazz age, and not the jazz age, but rather like jazz and, and music that would integrate itself into popular culture. So you had this kind of freedom, and they were going. And so this story was actually based off of an incident that happened in 1947 in Hollister, California, pretty much Northern California, where a gang of a motorcyclers came in, and it was reputed that they tore up the town. They really did it. But Life Magazine and a few others took some stage photos and created this mm, kind of exaggerated version of what happened. And so this movie was written on the backside of that. First an article in a newspaper, then a book, then a movie. And Marlon Brando, who at the time is about 30 years old, so he's a little old for the role, he, he took over. And uh, he had an adversary in the film, which was played by Lee Marvin, who was also about 30. They both might have been a little bit too old for the film, but it worked, right? Both of them are, are really good actors, um, but they didn't get along, and you can feel that tension on screen. So it's a pretty good movie to watch. Lee Marvin was pretty much drunk throughout the movie. Marlon Brando looked down on that a little bit, but also Marlon Brando had a different acting method than Lee Marvin did, and Lee Marvin would make fun of him for that, so that they did have this antagonistic relationship in the movie, and it kind of plays itself out. Now there's a few other things that you should consider about uh, the wild one that it was in 53 so this precedes 1957's Rebel Without a Cause. James Dean very much patterned his character after that uh, and uh, I think also Elvis Presley really uh, patterned what he did in Jailhouse Rock after this and, and even in, in influenced uh, movies you know throughout time after that this became the iconic rebellious biker outlaw kind of movie so that it moved it moved through that time uh, also in this was Mary Murphy who you know did most of her work on television but she really did a good job in this as Brando's love interest so it's a really cool movie now that trophy that's on top of his triumph motorcycle let's see his group they were the uh, the black rebel motorcycle club actually during the film they ask what are you rebelling against to Brando? And he says, what do you got? It's a famous line from, from the story. But that was his group, and they all rode Triumphs, but Lee Marvin's group, they all rode Harley Davidson. So it's pretty cool to see these bikes from that era. Also, that's a, um, a trophy that they actually stole from a competition where they kind of crashed in on this one town. And then Pigeon, who rolls with Brando's uh, Johnny, he grabbed that trophy. He would have grabbed the first place trophy, but it was too big, it wouldn't fit into his jacket. So he grabbed that one, and that became kind of like a central uh, part of the movie. Uh, it symbolized a few different things within the movie, how Brando would treat that trophy, hand it off, who would take it from him, and the like. So, again, this really had an impact on popular culture. It's, in fact, it was regarded as so controversial, they wouldn't even show it in England. Like they rated it at X and eventually it took them like 10 years until they'd even show this film over there. So it did have its edgy parts. Um, so I, I really would suggest to anybody that's into that. Now, you can see Never just kind of has his signature in the top right corner. The rest of it is really dedicated uh, to the great Marlon Brando. This would have been about 
what, uh, 53, so this probably be like 20 years before he did his great role in The Godfather. And so that's what's really interesting when you consider what a great actor Marlon Brando was, that he could play in effect a disaffected youth here, and then, you know, the head of a mafia family, not 20 years later. Marlon Brando's really got a part in our popular culture. Okay, a little bit of insight into the wild one, into Jonas Never's work. He's always on the edge, and this one in Venice. It's Never Seen L.A. on Sports Stories. Check it out. and how it's buried.